Born in 1863 on a small farm in Michigan, a young Henry Ford was given a pocket watch at the age of 12 by his father. Henry was so fascinated by its intricate movements and tiny mechanical parts that he would disassemble it and reassemble it over and over until he could almost do it with his eyes closed. If it wasn't for his fascination with engineering, the world would probably have never known a company so successful as Ford Motor Company, and the modern day automobile would be something else entirely because of it. If you were to ask a bunch of random people on the street who invented the first car, nine times out of ten you'd probably be told to go away. But the last person would probably say that it was Henry Ford, and if you also asked them what was the first car, they'd probably tell you that it was the Model T. But those answers would be completely wrong. The first car to be recognized as a car was invented in 1886 by a German guy named Karl Benz. But what if I told you that the first electric car was invented before the first internal imbustion imbustion, yeah that's a word first internal combustion engine. Without making this a video about methods of self-propulsion, the first electric car was made in 1881 by a French guy named Gustave Trouvet, however you say that. So, okay, did Ford invent the assembly line, in which he's also considered being the first at? No, surprisingly. That would be the company known as Oldsmobile. Well then, what was he the first one to pioneer? Surely he had to have came up with something first. To answer that, I'd probably have to explain the whole automobile industry of the early 1900s. But to put it simply, he invented... Fordism. Fordism. It's the concept of efficiency, productivity, safety, and quality all wrapped up into one. Much like McDonaldization, for those of you who've seen the movie The Founder, Ford basically took the assembly line and made it so efficient that he could produce a car in less than two hours, compared to the 12 and a half hours that everyone else was doing at the time. Making the Model T cheaper, safer, and of better quality. You see, cars back then were expensive, unreliable, and seen as a rich person's toy. As with any technology, the newer they are to the market, the more expensive. Like TVs, for instance. Henry was so successful at flooding the market with his affordable car that it changed society and culture in ways that were never thought possible. Finally, a working man could afford something that was reserved for the elite. In fact, a worker at one of Ford's factories could afford a Model T with four months salary and they got paid as high as $5 a day, which was completely bonkers at the time. But the Ford company that we know today almost didn't happen. It was Henry Ford's third attempt at making cars that finally took off. His first company was a result of his first design, called the Quadricycle. The Detroit Automobile Company focused on delivery vehicles, but eventually failed after two years because he was bad at marketing. Shortly thereafter, he created the Henry Ford Company, but then left a few months later, which went on to become Cadillac. After a few years of creating race cars and tinkering in his spare time, he gained a reputation. He then sought out investment for his new company, the Ford Motor Company which gained the attention of two businessmen who decided to invest in his new venture. Horace and John Dodge also supplied Ford with most of his parts needed to make the Model T. Ah yes, Ford was pumping out cars left and right, and sales reached almost 500,000 units. By 1918, half of all cars in the United States were all Model Ts. They were coming off the assembly line faster than they could get painted. He once said, any customer can have a car painted any color that he wants, so as long as it's black. His reasoning? Black paint dried faster for some reason. 
Life couldn't be better for the fledgling business tycoon, or at least that's what it looked like on the surface. But deep down, Henry had a problem. A Dodge problem. The brothers had quite a huge stake in the company, which meant that they were getting a rather handsome dividend. Henry didn't like the fact that he was basically paying for the Dodge factory with profits from his Model T. In his eyes, he should be getting all that damn money, not them. So he came up with a little scheme, a little dastardly plan, if you will, to take back control of his company. He pretended that he was retiring from his position as president and that he was leaving the business to his son Edsel. Henry Ford, being a prominent figure in the United States at the time, made the stock price take a nosedive, which made the Dodge brothers panic sell most of their holdings. Henry then quickly swept in to buy them all back at a huge discount. His big brain play gave him back majority ownership again. The brothers then went on to start their own little company. Maybe you heard of it, maybe not. But Henry was back in control and he ruled it with an iron fist. He didn't allow anyone else's input in decision making. Because of the lack of input, sales were slipping on an aging platform. The Model T desperately needed to be replaced, but Henry refused to entertain the idea of a new model. A smaller General Motors at the time was quickly becoming very popular, and then Roaring Twenties came roaring in, just as fast as that Model T could make it off the assembly line. The antiquated Model T was kind of ugly compared to the other cars at the time. Ford did acquire the Lincoln Motor Company in 1922, but didn't much care for the luxury stylings of the brand. However, his son Edsel adored the fancier cars and begged Henry to come up with a replacement. Edsel was then granted full creative oversight of the Model A, the predecessor to the Model T, which surprisingly didn't do very well considering the economy took a complete shit on itself, which led Henry to blame everything on his son Edsel and the design of the car. He thought it was too flashy. The next decade was mostly okay for Ford. They survived the Great Depression, barely, but came out on the other side. You can also thank Henry for the five day work week and also profit sharing for employees. He believed in a philosophy of taking care of his employees, making sure that they always had time for leisure. Even though he had an issue with protesters during the Great Depression, who were only trying to unionize in his factory, let's just say five people were dead, six injured, and he had a broken public image. It was his wife Claire who ultimately convinced him to give in to the unions, otherwise she would divorce him. And at this point, I think I should tell you that I could do a whole other video about the workers' protest, but I'll just leave it at that. Another controversial thing that hurt his public image was his support for the Nazi party, and the fact that he was supplying Hitler with war material while also building Liberty engines in warplanes for the Allies. He also had a newsletter, the Dearborn Independent, that blamed Jews for all the world's problems. He later apologized for this and tried to say that he didn't know anything about it, but he was widely known as a racist. Hitler also stated that he kept a life-size portrait of Henry Ford next to his desk. Big yikes. Enzel became president of Ford in the 1930s, but later died of cancer in 1943, bringing Henry back into control once again. Now in his 80s and no longer fit to rule, to the point where Franklin Roosevelt considered a government takeover of the company. Henry relinquished his position to his grandson Henry Ford II, who was fighting in Europe at the time and had to be called home, leaving Henry to retire and live out the rest of his days quietly until 1947. Whether his dream was inspired by a simple watch on his 12th birthday, or his fascination with machinery growing up on a farm, there's no doubt that the modern day automobile would be totally unrecognizable without his contribution. Henry Ford just happened to be alive, at the right place, at the right time. Sure he had a share of awful ideas and crooked worldview, but you can't deny that after 119 years of progress, Henry Ford is still the best thing that ever happened to the world of personal transportation. Mm -hmm.